I really don't have anything to say, folks. I'm on here. Promised everybody I'm going to do a post game. I love doing this show. Love watching the Hawks. This uh, these past three days have been some of the more uh, dis- difficult, disappointing, frustrating. I, I don't even know uh, where to start. Uh, I know officiating is once again uh, a common theme. I already see it in our chat. I understand it. It was not good the majority of this game, but once again, um, I, I just don't. I, I don't understand. And I, I don't mean to. I don't want to come on here and just rip people. You know, I'm just not about that. I, I just don't understand why, when you're up two, a defensive assignment is not clear. Either you're switching or you're not. To me, I don't know why you're playing zone. I, I don't even know if they were in zone. I have to look back at the play. But for some reason, I'm not going to say who you watch the play. Somebody doesn't cover the three point shot. It was a very simple action. It was a pass to the right, back to to Jensen. She nails the three to virtually win the game. Um, you know, it's it is what it is. You don't miss that. You you miss that last shot by Sonano. It's about as perfect of a look. You, you cannot ask for a better look than what Monica Sonano had there at the end. Coming out of the timeout, uh, you you'd be able to advance the ball in the women's game which you're not able to do in the men's game. So they advance the ball. And my thinking here is, and I said it to a friend of mine who was watching the game with me. If you have Sonano down low, you take her. She has been money. She went through a stretch here these last three games where she was 15 of 15 from the field. She'd made 15 straight shots over the course of about three games. And somehow she misses one. I mean, it was a perfect setup there at the end. Um, she had one girl guarding her. She created space on the spin, and she just short-armed it. Kate Martin comes in, gets the offensive board, can't put it back up and in. McQu- McKenna Warnock, I believe, had the last second attempt at the rim. Three missed shots in the final two seconds, and uh, Iowa bows out of the tournament, and neither the men nor the women make it to the Sweet 16. I, I am just uh, absolutely baffled by it. You know, I don't know that I'm more baffled than I was on Thursday, but uh, incredibly disappointing. And I'm sorry that I'm not more uh, jolly. I really am. I tried to be somewhat positive on Thursday because, I mean, I don't know that I was positive, but it's one game. But when it happens again in a, you know, with with your with your other team, and over the course of the next couple of days, I really don't have uh, much to say. It's just absolutely. Uh, I don't want to say ridiculous because Creighton deserved to win the game, but uh, just incredibly disappointing. Lomanski's here. He says, yeah, the crowd was spectacular. Um, that fan base uh, here in Iowa City and here in Iowa, the Iowa women's fan base is absolutely spectacular. Um, Lomanski's here. Josh is here. Skyler's here. Jermaine is here. And that, that's pretty accurate that this has been a terrible Terrible week uh, to be an Iowa fan, unfortunately, although there is positives to take away. One being the fact that we are celebrating two teams that are in the tournament. There are a lot of programs who are not in the tournament. Only 16 teams get to the Sweet 16. I know nobody wants to hear that. And I will warn um, I will warn our callers this evening. I'm going to have the, the call line open. I know we just got a call coming in now. I want to keep the calls somewhat short because um, I want to give everybody an opportunity to react, to sound off, to vent, whatever you need to do. Thank you for calling from the Hawkeye of the Storm. Who's on the line? Oh, Corey, it's the real MVP. Hi, the real MVP. Just, uh, well, I just want to you know, like be there for you, like how you, you were with me when we lost to the Peacocks. I mean, I just feel horrible for Iowa fans right now. Well, yeah. I know. It, it, the, go ahead. I know this isn't the way you wanted to go, but Let's put some perspective on it. Very few teams won both the men's and women's big uh, conference championship this year. Very much so. Iowa sports isn't terrible, as some people are saying. We don't need to fire anybody. You still got the best player in the country coming back. You had a bad game, and it happened. You're right. 
I, 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 I'm just baffled at how this happens. You know, maybe the worst performance of the season for Iowa tonight. Now, I know Iowa had some early losses. They didn't play well here in Ames. Um, you know, they were dealing with a lot of COVID issues during the season. But once again, this is kind of like the, the men. This just kind of came out of nowhere. I, I just don't understand it. And it's at home with a sold-out crowd. That's a good Creighton team. Um, I, I don't... I don't know how I don't know how to explain this. Uh, Lauren Jensen averaged I think 1.4 points a game as a freshman last year at Iowa, and obviously she's made a big jump, and I give her total credit. But she scores 19 and and delivers the dagger. I, I just almost a carbon copy. It feels like a carbon copy of what we saw Thursday, and maybe I'm living in the moment. Yeah, but I, I think the uh, the the anger and frustration is justified for today. But I still think I was still in a good, better place than most basketball programs, football programs, and sports programs in general. Absolutely, I agree with you. And t- if we're just being completely honest, I don't see personally anybody beating South Carolina this year. Anyway, now I know that doesn't hurt from the pain and loss because you guys would still make it. It probably should have made it to the Elite Eight. But I don't think this was a national championship team just because of the bracket they were in. I agree. So it's it's not it, as this is not as a, as a Iowa. Been. Listen, I don't mean to rain anybody's parade. This is not an. I don't care if they had a bad day or not. Even at Iowa's best, this is not a Final Four team. No, and that's that's not. Uh, I'm, I'm not trying to shade Iowa there. I'm just giving yeah, no, South Carolina you. that much credit. No, I, I get you totally, and um, the bottom line is this team This team dealt with injury. It dealt with COVID pauses. It dealt with um, you know in, more injuries midseason. McKenna Warnock was down for a while. Um, tremendous pressure from the outside with Caitlin Clark being who she is. She had maybe her worst performance of the season. Sonano got sideways. They nearly pulled this. They should have won this game despite all of that. I mean, it, this team was rolling. And your rolling. lack I mean, of third uh, option also hurt tremendously. Well, there, yeah, there is no, there is no third option, Drill MVP. I mean, I, I again, that's not a diss to Gabby Marshall. I love Gabby Marshall, love Kate Martin, love McKenna Warnock. But there is, once you get past Sonano and Clark, it's pretty much, it, it's a struggle. And there's not a lot of athleticism. I'm just calling a spade a spade. I love this team, but there's not much athleticism. There's not a whole lot of offense once you get past those two juggernauts. And they are spectacular. But, well, what I meant by third option is usually it's not one person, but usually somebody will have a 15-point game or something like that. And tonight that did not happen. Right. And it's gonna it's just hard for any team to rely on two players to win a game, especially with the Creighton team. that They shoot the three ball better than almost any team in the country. And they did early. You know, Iowa, Iowa find a way to stymie them later in the game, but uh... – you know, those eight threes, what, in the first first maybe 15, 16 minutes of the game. I mean, you just can't allow eight threes um, and you dig yourselves a 12-point deficit. And you're, you're – I mean, they dug – I give Iowa credit. They dug themselves back out. But, again, you, you, that's that's what killed you. you. You dig yourself a hole early, and it's it's hard to uh, – even with a run and at home with that crowd, it's it's hard to really sustain it. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, in just terms of the broader picture in general, I mean, for the women's tournament, this has been one of the most craziest years ever. Double-digit seeds are doing amazing. Jacksonville State almost beat LSU. UT Arlington beat Iowa State. This is just a really deep year for women's basketball. It is. And I, and I wish the best for Creighton. I'm happy for Jensen. I'm happy for Creighton. Not a Creighton fan, but um, I'll, I'll be rooting for them moving forward, especially if they play Iowa State. Yeah, well, we don't know. I mean, if, if they play like they did against UT Arlington, Georgia can very easily beat them, especially with the way they played against Dayton. So uh, that's all I got for you, Corey, tonight. I'm sorry for the loss tonight. I know it's not the outcome you were expecting, but 67 teams get eliminated and only one wins. That's very true. All right, man. Appreciate the call. Um, Gypsy says the the radio post game. Well, that sucked. Okay, that's what was said. That uh, it's pretty accurate. Um, uh, 
I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to put up any comments here that have foul language. That's nothing personal. I just don't I'm not going to have that on my show. Um, but I, I have no problem addressing some of the comments in here. Um, I, I didn't know I was babying the women's team, Skylar. Skylar says that I can baby them if I please, but it's an ongoing thing. I, I don't think I'm babying anybody. So I, I don't know what the ac- the accusatory nature of the, uh, the comments are for, but uh, thank you for being here, Skylar, as always. I don't know what that's all about, but Kevin, both men and women were too excited to win the uh, Big Ten championships. Maybe there's something to that, although the women bounced back with a pretty dominant performance against Illinois State, so I don't know how you follow it up with this. Merv brings up uh, the perimeter defense. Um, yeah, I don't quite understand. Um, this is what's frustrating, and, and – this is, seems to be, we, we talked about, yes, uh, was it yesterday? We talked about some of the most difficult Iowa men's basketball losses of the past 17 years. And one of those losses was to Northwestern State. I believe Iowa scored 63. Um, now, again, I know that was an Alford coach team, but it's interesting that the men scored 63, I believe, against Richmond on Thursday. The women score 62 today. So you could argue that offense has been the bugaboo in these devastating losses, but I, Merv is absolutely right. The, the defense is still a problem for the women. Um, again, I know you're going to say, well, that wasn't the problem tonight. I get that. But there were, again, a lot of, I think when when Bluter and Jan Jensen and this staff look at the tape here of this game, and it may be a while before they do that, but when they look at the tape from this game, I think they're going to see a lot of breakdowns, not just on the three-point shot that should never have happened, but the easy drives, miscommunications, the lack of rebounding, they got killed on the boards. And, and that's going to be, you know, it was a struggle heading into this year. You remember back in Big Ten media days, um, Monica Sinano and Caitlin Clark and Lisa Bluter talking to the media about defensive struggles, very similar to the men's struggles. And I feel like the men took a bigger jump in that category as the season went on. And the women, you know, the women sort of remind me a bit of the Iowa men from last year. They just don't have a lot of athleticism. They've got a really good big like the men did and Luca Garza and Monica Sinano. Uh, now, the difference is the women have a stellar guard in Caitlin Clark, but defensively, they've got a long ways to go. And even if they had pulled this game out, I, I would not have had any confidence in them beating South Carolina. Maybe you get by Iowa State, an Elite Eight run would have been fantastic. I'm not downplaying that. But they've got, they, just like the men, they've got some serious steps to take before they can potentially be a Final Four contender. And that's not outlandish to talk about that. They, they were a two seed. They just won the Big Ten regular season and the tournament title. That is something that should be a goal. I'm sure it is a goal, but there's still some major steps, hurdles to have to jump over to get to that point. Thank you for calling from the Hawkeye of the Storm. Who's on the line? Yeah, this is Pat from Minnesota. Hey, Pat. And I uh, followed the women, of course, all year very closely, and I looked at the stats before the game, and I was very impressed with uh, the teamwork it looked like that uh, Creighton had. And they weren't very tall. We had a height advantage, but obviously that didn't work out because uh, – because I, I, they had a great uh, game plan. I noticed they, they took the ball out a lot on rebounding and it went out to their, their guards a lot of the time, and that's why they controlled the, the boards a lot on the offensive rebounding. So that really hurt us. Um, I thought that I didn't – now I'm going to have one negative on the officiating. I think yeah. the overall the officiating was horrible, I mean, especially in the first half. And I thought Clark got fouled on that layup going in at the end of the game. But I thought she uh, did too, again, yeah. I thought she did. Too. I, I mean, she really got bumped hard going in there. And but but anyway, I, I know you can't just blame it on that. Uh, Iowa still should have won the game. But it goes back what everybody else has been saying. We're just not get it. They just didn't get the support that they normally get from the other players, uh, which really hurt us. Um, and also, I will say this: obviously, a fantastic season for both the men and the women. So overall, very positive. And I think next year, I know I feel like a kind of a Chicago Cub fan <laughs> with uh, saying this, but. I think next year, wait till next year, because Iowa is going to be fantastic on the, at least the women's team, because I think they have a recruit coming in at 6'2". I think she's in state, as I recall, and she can play forward or guard, and she's like, I think she's a four or five star, I think. Am I, do you have heard about that, Corey? I don't follow Iowa women's basketball recruiting as much as, as uh, maybe some people, so uh, I'd have to look up who you're talking about. I yeah, know who you're think, talking about. Um, yeah, I, I think she's and fantastic. And so she and and, uh, and and Clark will be fantastic. And, and of course, we got everybody else coming back for the most part. So I think we'll have a really good next year. And, again, I think the, 
the team, both teams where you can be really proud of where they finished. And like uh, I think it was Jermaine that said earlier, uh, we probably weren't going to go. It would have been fantastic to get to the lead eight, but I think that probably would have been as, the best we could have hoped for anyway. So uh, I'm just curious. Just, Pat, a, just a sad, sad ending. Pat, you said at the beginning of your call that uh, the women and the men had a tremendous season. Judging by some of the fans in the chat, uh, neither team had a the, – the, there's terrible coaching. It's a terrible – program you know it's a two terrible programs i'm just confused at the divide i'm just i'm not i'm not saying anybody's right or wrong i'm just confused as to how you can say that the seasons were great and other people say that the two coaches are trash and we need to just fire everybody well i'm from the old school and i remember when i was in college that uh iowa was just lucky to have a victory in football and basketball so i mean uh they've come so far that both programs and and i don't know if anybody watched the post game for the women's basketball team, but that was fantastic. I mean, after loss, obviously terrible loss, but the way um, they responded to the questions, um, Bohannon broke down. You saw how loyal he was to the Iowa program, and Fran gave him, a, you know, had his arm around him, and and you could see where Connor was really upset. He could hardly talk. So it just means obviously we all complain about losing, but when you look and see how much how devastating the players are and how hard they work. Uh, to, to play for Iowa, uh, we can we can keep our heads up and 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 realize what a fantastic and exciting season we have for both the men and the women. I appreciate your positivity, Pat, and I tend to agree more with you. I respect the people who are frustrated, but I, I agree with you. I think the programs are in good shape right now. This has just been a disappointing week. It is what it is, and that happens Correct. in March, and it's okay to be devastated. But I think you still got to keep things in perspective. And I appreciate you doing that. And the other thing is that, what, like the announcers have said, uh, the team that is the uh, heavy, heavy favored on these tournament games um, go in kind of tight. You know, like Creighton had nothing to lose today. And, and same with Richmond. I mean, they had nothing to lose playing the men. And that's a big advantage, even though we had the home crowd today. I think the other players were just kind of tight today for Iowa, and that, that hurt us as well. And that's all I got. Again, thanks again, Corey, for having the show. Appreciate it, Pat. Thanks for the call. And, uh, yeah, like I said, good perspective. Um, I respect other people's opinions if they, they're not happy with coaching and they're not happy with how the season ends. I mean, I don't think anybody, any of us are. And for the record, I want everybody to remember this. I am not, I don't claim to be some media person that uh, takes an unbiased reproach. I try to be as balanced as I can, but I am biased by nature because I'm an Iowa fan. So anybody wants to rip me, I'm not sure why. <laughs> like I've never understood what, why, why are we taking our frustrations out on others? I mean, I can take it. I don't have a problem taking it. I just, I don't get it. Um, I'm just as upset and frustrated about, the situation is everybody else and it is what it is. Um, You know, Ari gold, you can have this opinion if you want. I I don't agree with the opinion. You have every right to the opinion. I do appreciate you being here as always. Bad performances this week. That's all I can say. The real Hayden, we got absolutely destroyed over the back. No calls. They out rebounded Iowa. Yeah. There's no question about it. Um, And uh, yeah, Hannah, Hannah Stolke will be here next year. I believe that was who, um, Pat was referring to, they got Taylor McCabe and Jada Gianfi coming in as well. But, uh, you know, remember all five starters are expected to return next year with Monica announcing that she'll be back. So there's, there's positives there. Uh, Josh brings up wrestling. Yeah. Disappointing into wrestling for the most part as well. Um, it's just been a tough, tough month, right? I mean, a great February for basically every sport out there, right? You know, with the exception, maybe being wrestling when the, the Penn state game was sort of a letdown. I'm, was that late, maybe late January. The bottom line is, between the men winning the the uh, Big Ten tournament, I know it was beginning of March. The women doing the same, um, I think, for, for what first week of March. Both teams winning, or excuse me, the women winning the uh, regular season title. It is what it is. Uh, no one's blocked your comments, Ari Gold. If any of your comments are being blocked, it's through YouTube. Uh, I'm not blocking anything. I haven't blocked a single. Um, single comment. Um, I might not put up your comment, but that doesn't mean I'm blocking it. So uh, it is what it is. I, I'm not sure <laughs> the 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 anger, but uh, I haven't blocked a single comment. So if you're going to, you know, if it's something that YouTube flags, then YouTube flags it and uh, you won't have your comment on the live chat. So um, don't know what else to say on that. Um, Harpo says St. Peter's to the final four. Um, boy, what a what a story the Peacocks are. George Clark finished four of 19, 0 of eight in the second half. Lack of. Uh, Defensive rebounding was the ball game. Iowa men's and women's teams had a chance to tie at the end. Both could have been called fouls. Yeah, I, I thought the last one, 
I thought that was a good no call. I don't think you, you blow a whistle on that last series of plays, the last, uh, uh, what, three missed attempts uh, on the very last possession with, what, four seconds to go. But uh, you're right, Clark just struggled mightily, and I really didn't think this would happen. I really thought Clark, I really thought Clark would um, only struggle in this tournament against teams with length and teams with a lot of athleticism. And to be quite honest, Creighton doesn't have a lot of either one of those uh, traits. They're a good three-point shooting team. They're obviously aggressive. Um, they got an Iowa. I think they got an Iowa's heads early. Sassanano missed a couple she would normally make. And sometimes when you're that efficient and you start missing a couple, I think mentally things can go south and perhaps that happened. But um, I, I was surprised at Clark struggling as much as she did, but that's something that this is going to be some good tape for Caitlin Clark to review during the off season and figure out how to offset what, what Creighton was doing. I give Creighton a lot of credit. They played tough. They played hard to hold Iowa to 62 is one of the hardest things um, to do against. I mean, it, I just, I don't know. I'd have to look back at the uh, statistics this year and the numbers um, when was the last time Iowa was held to 62? That's uh, an interesting discussion. Um, Caitlin Clark is one of the best players in the country. How does she not get the rock with the game on the line? Makes zero sense. Let's remember that uh, she did get the ball in the previous possession and maybe she got fouled there. I thought she did. But here's the deal. I, I kind of had the same thought, but you got to remember, Sonano is about as sure-handed and is, as – as uh, just about as solid down low, especially in one-on-one -on -one situations as anybody in the country. And there was no double down there. I mean, she got sideways a bit during this game because there were constantly double teams being thrown at her. There was no double down there. And I don't know what to say. She just short armed it. Uh, it's just, it is in incredibly frustrating, disappointing, but you can't ask for a better shot in hindsight. Would you like Clark taking the final shot? Probably, but man, I just don't know. I don't know that you can say that. I mean, it, it, at the moment, I'm seeing Sonano down there, down low, and it's a great pass. I don't know who it was that threw in the pass, but it was a great pass. You just cannot ask for a better, uh, a better play. And and let's be honest, Sonano is one of the best in the league, in the in the country as far as it relates to footwork down low, uh, that little baby hook over her right shoulder. And uh, I would have never expected she'll probably make that about 90 out of 100 times, and she dismissed it when it when it mattered. Thank you for calling from the Hawkeye of the Storm. Who's on the line? What's up? This is Kells Bells. Hey, Kells Bells. How are you, Kelly? Uh, I've been better. I <laughs> understand. Uh, thoroughly disappointed. I brought my dad to the game. It's the first time he's ever been inside Carver Hawkeye Arena. It was my second game seeing them because I was at the game on Friday. Um, just so flipping disappointing. Um, I think I posted a comment earlier that I, I personally don't think it was coaching. I think she coached this game pretty much the same as she's coached all year long. Honestly, it just came down to the bunnies that we missed. A lot of bunnies I'll be, missed. I'll be, yeah, I'll be interested to see, uh, you know, watching the game back, how many of those, you know, less than five feet shots that we missed in this game. It was absolutely ridiculous. Including the final one of the game. Right. That's typically a bunny yeah. for Monica Sonano. That's about as easy of a shot for her as any. And uh, I, I'm, oh, I'm yeah. still shocked that she missed it. Yeah, I was too. There was, I mean, there was a lot of those, those that, you know, like one thing I couldn't figure out, and maybe this is coaching, when, they weren't, when the threes weren't falling, why they didn't start doing, you know, a shot fake and drive the ball? Because Obviously, they needed to get some some easy shots to uh, try and get into some kind of rhythm, but nobody else was able to get into any rhythm except Monica. And I'll say this. The only thing, Kelly, that I would critique as it relates to coaching without watching that game back in more depth is, to me, I thought that the end of quarter situations, I believe the – well, you could even argue the, the final – the, the fourth quarter, but I believe it was the end of the, the second quarter into the third quarter. I would turn the ball over both times and right. that's coaching. That's coaching out of a dead ball situation, out of a timeout. And both times Iowa turns the ball over and misses an opportunity that that's to me, that's all got to be on Bluter and on the staff. But other than that, I'd have to look totally back great. at the tape to really make it a, a real honest evaluation of coaching. No, I totally agree. That was pretty poor execution on those end of quarters especially when we had a little bit of momentum going and 
could have really, you know, tacked on like at the end of the first half when we scored six straight points. But, you know, it's like we didn't have that that killer instinct to try and put them away a little yeah. bit more. Very much like the men. Uh, very much yeah. like the men on Thursday. Iowa had times in that game on Thursday, less times than today. Well, actually, probably about the same. They basically trailed the majority of the game, had a stretch in the second half where Patrick McCaffrey went on a run, and they just couldn't put the nail in the coffin. Very similar. They're just very similar games, even score-wise. Very similar to uh, the men. Totally agree. But that's all I got. I'll let somebody else call in. Thanks for taking my call. Thanks, Kelly. Appreciate you listening. Appreciate you calling. You bet. Bye-bye. Appreciate the call from Kelly. Uh, Yakov, Freedom Liberty says not all five starters will be starting by the end of the Big Ten season. That could very well be the truth. And, uh, you know, again, we've got McCabe. You got McCabe coming in. Um, you know, we mentioned Hannah Stolke. You got another girl. Who's the other girl? Um, I had to I had to look her name up, too. Uh, I think another girl coming in from the Des Moines area, I believe. Um I'm, I'm embarrassed to, to not remember her name. Yakov 22 says it's time to, to turn our attention to spring practice and the spring game. Well, isn't that sad that uh, one weekend, not even done with the, the first weekend and, and it's already, uh, it's already done. So it's just tough. Um, Eric says, I hate to bring up the officiating again. Do they call shooting fouls in women's college basketball? Here's one of the things, Eric, that bothers me about women's college basketball. And I've seen it more and more and more. And by the way, uh, to our user that just got uh, a five, uh, whatever it is, a uh, a timeout. I'm not going to have people name calling in the chat. If you name call, if you say something, you know, derogatory directed at someone else, I'm going to, I'm not going to block you. I'm not going to block you the first time, but I am going to put you in a timeout. Uh, that's what I can do here because and that's, I'm not going to deal with that on the, on the show. So please be kind to one another. I don't know how, I don't know why I have to keep saying that we should all be adults here and be able to treat each other with respect. Eric says, do they call shooting fouls in women's college basketball? Um, Yeah, again, the officiating was not great. The other part of this is, let's remember how many jump balls are called in women's college basketball. It drives me insane. And I thought it maybe improved a bit from last season to this year. but And there were some jump balls. There's no question. There were some, some held balls in this game. But... Again, like I don't know what the difference is between the men's game and the women's game. I don't know that there's a is there a difference in how that's there's clearly a difference in how it's officiated. I don't think that that it should be the case, but there's clearly a difference in how it's officiated and way too many jump balls called. They got to figure out how to either let these girls play. Um, I, I don't know what the solution is, but way too quick with the whistle on jump balls. That's that's what I would say, especially and that goes both ways for officiating. Um. Tipsy says these uh, highest and high and lows seem to uh, be bipolar, uh, bipolar disorder with these two programs. I I can I can agree. Um, Freedom Liberty. Other players did not step up. Clark shouldn't be forced to shoot 10 threes. And that's really what the downfall of this team probably was always going to be. Um, Sonano has been a really good one to punch with Clark, but they just don't have enough consistent offense behind her. And I know I've talked about Kate Martin. You know, I she. You know, she's not being asked. She hasn't been asked to do a lot offensively. I think she's really going to need to take a step next year. Gabby Marshall's limited. She's she's not the quickest. She's not the biggest. She's a really tough nosed player. Uh, she made a couple big threes to get Iowa going today. But um, it's it's just hard when you don't have reliable options offensively behind Caitlin Clark and Monica Sinano. Um, DC Hawk. Thank you for being here, DC Hawk. Missed your five worst games yesterday. My deflating game, and this is switching back to the men's game for a moment, was I was lost to UNLV. Absolutely. And I again, I wasn't alive back then, DC Hawk. So, and that's part of the reason I just made it 17 years. I'm not 17 years old for the record, but I did make it 17 years because I really don't remember a lot of Iowa basketball watching it live before 2005. So, but I the, the UNLV game, I'm almost happy I wasn't alive because it would have uh, probably stuck with me just like it stuck with you. Skyler says, a great shot opportunity for the tie. You cannot argue with that that last shot. Uh, but yes, the, the 13 for 31 layups at the start of the fourth quarter, that's kind of a, the epitome of uh, Iowa's struggles today. Please hit the like button on this video. Thank you for this, Darrell MVP. Please hit the like button. Um, helps this show to uh, continue uh, to grow. Despite the fact that now we are literally officially in the offseason for both the men and the women. 
I mean, who would have expected that four days ago? Um, Ron says that the first quarter was where they lost the game. I'm not going to argue that either. Um, again, you can't dig yourself a deficit like that, especially at home. And I brought the same thing up mid game. The women kind of did what the, the men did with Richmond. Now I think Creighton's a better team relative to the sport than Richmond is. We saw Richmond get pounded yesterday by Providence. Doesn't that make Iowa fans feel better? Um, but you have a situation where the lower seed comes in this, this situation where you're, you're playing at home. If you're Iowa, you have the lower seed come in and you allow them to get a lead early and create momentum. It's going to, to make them believe it's going to give them that belief that, Hey, we can actually win this game. And then they're living with that belief the rest of the game. And I do think that happened against Richmond. I know Gary close brought that up on our show that happened against Richmond. It happened today. I believe it happened today uh, against uh, Creighton. And that'll come back to bite you in tournament play. And you could argue the same thing happened with St. Mar- uh, St. Peter's in Kentucky. You cannot allow the lower seeded team. You got to put them away early. It's going to be hard for them to climb back into a game, almost impossible for them to climb back into a game. But Iowa didn't put them away early today. The men didn't put them away early on Thursday. And as a result, they're both packing. Um, thank you for this, Eric. Yes, please subscribe to the show if you have not subscribed to the channel, if you have not already done so. Um, the real Hayden again, end of quarter coaching. That that is the biggest frustration from a coaching perspective, and certainly defensively, they just got to figure out figure it out. They they lack athleticism. I kind of compared them to the Iowa men's t- men's team last year. Very similar. Both teams were two seeds. Ironically enough, uh, both lost to uh, seeds less lesser than them. I guess you could say uh, Iowa last year, and then um, or the, the men last year, the women this year. Uh, but yeah, the, the the lack of athleticism defensively causes problems for a team that just doesn't play great in the zone, and they're not real long. I mean, you, you're not gonna you don't get a lot of length from this Iowa team, um, especially without Sharon Goodman. I think you add Sharon Goodman to the mix, perhaps they have a, a better, uh, they have certainly a better depth, but the length is really a big thing. And, and certainly, you hope next year if two freshmen can come in here and um, help them defensively. You don't often expect that out of a, a freshman, but that's going to be how they see playing time is if they can come in there and provide length and pro- provide energy on defense, um, they're going to be able to help this team uh, hopefully take a step, another step in the right direction defensively. Cause at times they played good defense, kind of like the men last year at times they played good defense throughout the year at times they did tonight. But when your offense is off and you don't have a lot of, you know, anything going behind, I mean, uh, who, who would, who would you say offensively had a great game tonight? I mean, I don't think anybody did. Um, I don't have this. Let me pull up the stats for anybody who's just joining us. Um, Clark, I believe, finished with, what, 19? Pull up the final numbers here for Caitlin Clark. Uh, yeah, so Clark ended up with, um, excuse me, 15. Why did I think she had 19? 15 points on four of 19 shooting. Now, Sonano, I mean, I give her credit. She had 27 points. It didn't even feel like she had 27 because she missed eight. She missed eight shots, which is a lot more than she don't normally missed or misses, but she had she went 12 of 20 from the from the uh, field six boards for for Monica Sonano and she's certainly kicking herself because the last three point try by Jensen I I think that was uh that was probably on Sonano and Sonano not great guarding the perimeter but in that situation you just cannot give up a three but Clark again four of 19 she had 11 assists she had a double double but 15 and 11 that's a winning number for any team coming into Iowa City and the next the next highest score was Warnock with six she was three and nine from the field Gabby Marshall was had, uh, had six, two of seven from the field. Kate Martin was two of nine from the field with four points. Feuerbach had uh, two points. Uh, Taiwo had two points. Uh, O'Grady was scoreless. O'Grady needs to big, take a big jump next year as well because um, certainly after next year, Sonano will be gone and this will be O'Grady's uh, paint, so to speak. DC Hawk, yeah, yeah uh, kind of, you know, the, you're right. The, the, the men's team last year, as far as just pure offensive talent, had a lot more talent top to bottom than this women's team did. Um, but as far as just cumulative production on that end, that's kind of where I compare the two. Um, yes, Freedom Liberty brings up Jada Giamfi. Um, she's she's going to provide them some length next year as well. Joby says uh, they – Double team Clark in the last play. Kate Martin was a passer out of bounds. Thank you for that, uh, Joby, because yes, that was a good pass by Kate Martin. Um, I, I don't know how it, it's perfectly executed. I give I give Blue to credit. It was executed perfectly. The shot just didn't go down. So, uh, you know, it is what it is. Um, 
Freedom Liberty, this offense has lacked balance most of the year. Need other plays to create uh, players to create their own shots in close games. Um, yeah, both were wearing their gold script jerseys today. So uh, unfortunate uh, that that seems that little uh, I don't know what you want to call it, but Iowa seems to have success wearing the the gold uniforms at home. Yakov twenty two. I did not attend the game. Yakov twenty two. Although. Uh, what an impressive crowd. I got to give the crowd credit. If there's anything to be positive about, it's that crowd that showed up today. Um, very impressed, and there's no question about it. Um, they did all they could to help this team win. I mean, I don't know what more you can ask for. It's like what they said, the third biggest crowd in early round NCAA tournament history. That's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. Um, Freedom Liberty. You need to learn over the back calls, which is missing from women's basketball. It happens all the time. Happened all the time tonight. Taiwo was off. Um, I, I thought she could have provided a spark. I really like Tomi Taiwo. And and again, another player that struggled. She only played 12 points. Got her chin dinged up a bit there early. She came in and then just never seemed to get back uh, on track. Um, Eric says, uh, Kate Martin hit a, a critical three, then missed one the next try. Uh, Should have gone back to her again, not given up too soon. Hindsight is certainly 2020. Steve, Caitlin having a, a bad shooting day kind of set the tone she will have a, have better days ahead. And I was surprised that down the stretch, Caitlin didn't take more shots. She just missed a lot of threes. I mean, she was three of 10 from three. Just very odd, especially in the clutch moments and at home. They just could never ride the momentum enough to really take control. And uh, it is what it is. The five threes in the first quarter were huge. Freedom Liberty, that uh, mentioned that earlier. Eight threes, I think, in the first, what, quarter and a half. This is a football question from Eric. He says, when do you think we'll know the starting quarterback? Uh, day of opening... Day, if you want to talk any football, that is. Uh, well, as far as the starter for the fall season, I, I don't think we're probably going to know that. At least we're not going to get an official announcement about that probably until the fall um, because I don't know why you why, – why would you? Why wouldn't you leave this competition wide open? Um, you know, and I, I again, we'll see with the spring. That's going to be one of the most fascinating position battles in the history of, of Kirk Ferentz's tenure here because – I mean, there have been some controversial quarterback decisions that have, you know, needed to be made by this by this coaching staff. But as poor as quarterback play has been, it's going to be one to follow. They didn't bring anybody new in, so you're going to have. I mean, Carson May will be here this fall, but it'll be a three man race this spring. So it will be an interesting, uh, an interesting race. Thank you for calling from the Hawkeye of the Storm. Who's on the line? Hi, Corey. Todd here. Um, I'm calling from Michigan. Uh... I don't have the show live. Were you uh, talking about the girls' basketball tonight? Yes, we are. Um, did many people mention the uh, lack of rebounding effort in the first half and the, the first three quarters? Uh, we haven't talked about that much, but you're absolutely right. And I don't have the first half stats yet from the university, but 52 to 37, the, the rebounding differential in general and the offensive rebounding count even even more stark 15 to 8 in favor of Creighton you're right they did get better as the game went on but they dug themselves such a hole on the glass early it's hard to overcome and then they were giving up threes off 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 the rebounds yeah I I believe um, at tournament time from the defensive rebounding uh, all five players have to have to want to get the basketball and be determined to get it and it seems like a lot of the a lot of the guards uh, and the small forwards watch a shot go up and then just stand there, and when it hits the rim, then they move. And you have to anticipate a miss when you're uh, when you're playing defense. It felt like some of the same struggles um, that the men had for much of the year, and I think the men improved as the season went on. But it's, it just seems like it's such a it's just like pulling teeth to get um, defensive rebounds, and yet. On the other end, Iowa getting hardly any offensive rebounds. It just seemed like the same struggles the men. The men and the women are very – they parallel each other in a way. Um, but, uh, yeah, and I, I think size – with losing Sharon Goodman early in the year, that was going to hurt you, just naturally was going to hurt you. Um, O'Grady's got to get a lot better, and I think she will. And, again, they have some size coming in next year. But you're right, rebounding was a huge, huge storyline today. Now, now, old school George Raveling, he was the master at teaching kids how to rebound. He would – spend entire practices taking the whole team around uh, and, you know, going to a spot on the floor and saying, okay, shot comes up from here. And then he'll tell you the percentages of where the rebound will come off. And he says, if you're not working to one of those areas, you're not rebounding. Right. And we, we did see some, some long shots and long rebounds today. I mean, a couple plays where 
Creighton's launching a deep three and you've got four Iowa women standing around the basket and somehow it gets tapped out to a girl in blue. And so you got to understand, you know, that's a pretty basic principle, long shots equal long rebounds. And uh, that is hard. Well, I mean, that's, that's, that that's, is what I, I guess what I'm saying is it's, it's very fixable. Sure. I mean, missing yeah. shots, it's hard to, like you've said before, um, you're going to miss shots. There's going to be games where collectively as a team you're cold and you uh, you have to be able to make it up somewhere else in the uh, you know in the game. Right. And when we keep lauding Creighton for making all these threes, they shot 29% from three. So they just shoot a high volume of threes, but they were rebounding off their misses. And you're right, uh, Reggie Evans, I mean, the first guy that comes to my mind who wasn't huge, but he – was an exceptional rebound. You got to be huge to be able to rebound effectively. That'll be something that this team certainly, I'm sure Jan Jens, Jan Jensen is Jan Jensen, excuse me, especially with her pedigree with 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 bigs. I think she'll probably be integral and in then helping helping this team to be able to figure out their rebounding woes because that certainly uh, that cost them today. There's no question. And men, you could say the same thing. Both of these teams offensively, the Iowa women today and the Iowa men Thursday, either neither team. Um, played well offensively. Iowa, the Iowa men scoring 63, the women scoring 62, and neither team. You brought it up. You got to be able to overcome the, uh, those off days, and neither team could come up with enough defensively, enough on the glass to overcome um, subpar offense. Now, now the guy that played on the men's team was it Perkins, the guard. Mm -hmm. Yep, excellent at rebounding. He. Yeah. As soon as that shot goes up, you know, he wants that ball. I mean, he's a guard, right. but he, he'll go right down with everybody and go get it. It's, uh, I, I think it's a Dennis Rodman type mindset. When, when that ball's up in the air, it's mine. Uh, and Rod I think that's, you can coach that stuff. That's, Absolutely. It's not that hard. No, it's, uh, it, it, like I said, um, it, it's got to improve because you can't lose, you can't give up 15 offensive rebounds and expect to win. That's just way too many. Yeah, and you're you're gonna play uh, you're gonna play games where the the refs are gonna swallow the whistle and allow brutish play, and uh, you have to find a way to gut through it as a team. Yeah, especially at home, you got the crowd in your favor as a sellout. Um, you're you're absolutely right, sir. I, I want to thank you for your uh, your channel. Uh, you do a wonderful job, and I've appreciated all year long. I appreciate that. First sir. time I've called you, though. Well, I appreciate you calling. I appreciate you listening all year. Hopefully, hopefully you won't go anywhere, and you'll be back next year and throughout the off season. Yeah, before the internet, when we were here in Michigan, it would be like a week before we heard the Iowa scores. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to be able to help in that regard. <laughs> Thanks, Corey. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Bye bye. Appreciate that call from uh, Michigan. Uh, Yakov 22, my parents, my family, my wife, are they Hawkeye fans? Um, not as big a Hawkeye fans as I am. Let's just say uh, I, my wife doesn't watch a lot of Iowa basketball or Iowa football with me. Um, and my family, my family in general. My brother is a big Iowa fan, but I'm certainly uh, the biggest Iowa fan in my family. So uh, if that answers your question. Um, Eric. How many upsets are we sitting at in the men's and women's bracket so far? Boy, I don't have that count. Um, I could pull it up, but uh, I had predicted before the men's tournament began. I did not predict this with the women, although the women, the, the women's college basketball is more balanced now than it probably ever has been, or at least in the past 20 years in my lifetime, um, even. But uh, I, I had predicted before the men's game, the men's tournament started that we'd see a record number of upsets. Certainly. Did not expect that, you know, that to happen, you know, for Iowa. Um, but, uh, you know, we're talking St. Pete, and I, I can probably count most of them. You know, Baylor losing to North Carolina, Iowa losing to Richmond, St. Peter's beating Kentucky, Colorado State losing to Michigan. We saw Tennessee lose to Michigan, which is great for the Big Ten, by the way. But there have just been upsets all over the place. And um, I still predicted, I predicted this, and I know people ripped me for it. I still think TCU is going to beat Arizona. Um, and I can give everybody, let me give everybody an update here. Um, because we are talking women's hoops, but might as well give you an update on the men's game. Um, Ohio State trailing Villanova 39-28 at halftime. So not looking good for the Big Ten there, but 20 minutes left, of course, uh, in front of the Wildcats and the Buckeyes. Houston defeating Illinois today by 15. We've got Michigan State Duke in about an hour and 20 minutes. Uh, Iowa State, Wisconsin, Notre Dame, Texas Tech, Miami, Auburn, Texas, Purdue, and then that game that I believe will be an upset. I could be wrong. 
It's hard to predict these things. Arizona and TCU tonight on TBS. But boy, Purdue's now got a, a wide open shot to the final four with Kentucky and Baylor losing. Okay, um, getting back to the chat here. Um, Kelly says uh, there's they are used to those shots dropping, not needing to rebound. And yeah, bring, perfect example of what our caller was just bringing up. It, you, you've got to be able to, and I'm not saying they don't. I'm sure Jan Jensen and and this entire coaching staff is running through rebounding drills, right? I mean, there, there are drills that these teams run um, to kind of simulate effort on the glass. And um, I would think those drills are going to happen regardless of how you've been shooting the ball because you can have games like this. And um, again, defensively, defensively, there's no excuse for giving up 15 offensive rebounds because you're, you're obviously, I mean, y- you would hope that you're causing misses and, and needing to get rebounds. That's the ideal situation, right? So uh, that will be addressed, I'm sure, uh, in plenty this offseason. George, Creighton hit eight threes in the first half, 19 offensive boards, multiple second chance points. Iowa played a lot of zone in the first half, made no sense versus a jump shooting team. Second half, we played man to man. And again, George, they just don't have, this is the problem with the women. It was the problem last year with the men. They, Iowa just doesn't have great individual defenders. They don't have a lot of athleticism. So you're stuck playing a zone. And if you're not great at doing it, again, especially against a team that can shoot threes, it can turn into a, a, a tedious situation. That's kind of what happened today. Football B9, thank you for being here. I'm assuming you're a sir. Thank you for being here, sir. Um, and yes, again, uh, disappointing. I know Ari Gold, you're you're disappointed. I understand. Um, you know, do you call it a choke? I, I don't know. Again, I got to give Creighton and Richmond some credit, but uh, it is what it is. By the way, the, the call line is back open. The caller line is back open. 515-635-1601. Be on here for... About 13 to 15 more minutes. Um, and this will be, this is what's sad, folks, at least for me. Maybe nobody else, else on here cares. This is going to be my final post game of the year. So, uh, of the season, right? Final post game of the season. Um, you know, w- maybe we'll do a, a national championship post game show. But as far as it relates to Iowa sports, this is it. And um, wrestling's, you know, wrestling done uh, moving forward, men done at moving forward, the women done moving forward. It's a really weird place to be. You got spring practice starting next week, so there'll be plenty to talk about. But as it relates to, to uh, post game shows, it'll be a while before uh, we do an Iowa post game show. Eric says, "I was wondering where all the fouls were. It seemed like the rest were simply observing the game, like the crowd at times." And Eric, here's the deal: I, I made the comment when we were heading to the fourth quarter. I wondered at that point, with Iowa still trailing, perhaps the officiating is going to shift. I mean, you want it to be even and fair the entire game, but it felt like at one point, perhaps. The officials now with the crowd and given that Iowa's a two seed and Caitlin Clark's the hottest ticket in women's college basketball, that perhaps, perhaps you will have a situation where the officials start to at least even it out. Didn't really see that happen. But again, I'm not going to blame the officials. I don't think the officials were the reason Iowa lost. Kind of like the men. I mean, this is very similar. It's almost deja vu from what happened uh, on Thursday. Uh, you're welcome to uh, bring up other questions, football, Bean, or Eric. Uh, I have no problem with that. Lomansky says, what hurts me the most was the losses at home. Ditto. Uh, Kurt says, last night the St. Peter's coach was asked a question about how to get under the, the skin of higher-seeded opponents. He said, the games are easy. My practices are tough. Says it all. Absolutely. And obviously, St. Peter's has been well-coached in March. Not saying that other people, other teams aren't being well-coached. But obviously, that team, that Peacocks team, beating... Kentucky and then beating the other team from Kentucky, Murray State. Boy, they know how to they know how to play in big, big moments. And boy, wouldn't it be something if a 15 seed could get to the final four? I mean, long ways to go, but would be uh, interesting. Tipsy, Tennessee fil- uh, killed my bracket, killed mine as well. Killed mine as well because uh, I had them in my championship game. Um, Brian says Arizona better win. I've got Arizona losing tonight. Um, Tipsy says I got Purdue going to the championship game. I've got them in my final four. Um Lomansky, this is disturbing. This is very disturbing. And uh, anybody else who's disturbed by it, um, please uh, make that known. Of course, I uh, always enjoy hearing from you, Lomansky. But he says, without your chat, Corey, I might bite the dog. Yeah, don't do that. That might be a uh, that might be a problem. Please, please don't uh, bite the dog. Um, 
Yakov22 is a programming idea. Could get you more subscribers. Video of you running the 40 vertical leap, bench press, and maybe other combine activities. That's just uh, must see YouTube. Uh, who wants to see me run a 40? Why does anybody care about me running a 40, Yakov22? First of all, I wouldn't run a great 40. Um, I've never been a, I, I've never been able to jump very high. All right. I'm about six foot. What am I about six, one, six, two, somewhere in there. And I've never been able to dunk, <laughs> which is pathetic. So, uh, and bench press, let's not go there either. But <laughs> Thank you for the idea. Yakov. I always appreciate you being here. Freedom Liberty. We shot 23% from three as a team. Um, and Iowa just doesn't have, they just don't have besides Sonano. Who do they have really? They can pound it inside. Really isn't anybody. Warnock is not really that kind of player. She made a couple nice plays in this game, but it just is what it is. It just, it didn't work. But again, Creighton shot 30, uh, excuse me, 29% from three. Neither team shot the ball well. I mean, Creighton attempted 34 three-point shots, made 10 of them. But that should be a winning number for Iowa, and it just wasn't. Uh, we'll see if Michigan State beats uh, Duke tonight. That uh, will be interesting, or I guess not tonight, this afternoon. Um, and Pat, this is good perspective. All but one team ultimately chokes. That's valid. I mean, there's only one winner. Everybody's season besides the champions of the NIT, the CBI, the CIT, and the NCAA tournament, every team loses at some point. Obviously, you don't want it to be the first weekend, but it is what it is. Tipsy says, uh, switch to Iowa State. Please don't do that. And boy, how disappointing. Iowa had an opportunity to win this game. They're probably playing Iowa State next Friday with a chance to to get back at the Cyclones, and now they won't even have that opportunity. Just uh, disappointing. Real Hayden, live by the three, die by the three. George says that Bluter blamed officiating. Um, I, again, I, I, I haven't listened to her after the game. I, I, I know she's been very critical. I bring up the Ohio State game. If anybody remembers that home game against Ohio State in, what, February or maybe early March? Uh, more just ridiculous officiating. I don't know what the, the solution, what the answer is to poor officiating. It seems to be a problem in both the men's and the women's game. Different problems in both. Um, I don't remember there ever being this big of an issue. It seems like the, the problems have grown. Perhaps the uh, departures of guys like Ed Hightower have just hurt in, in, in the long run. Just don't have the, the bodies, I guess, that are officiating at the Big Ten level. But that's a problem, and I don't know the solution. Do you just fire everybody and, and find new officials? I think that's probably a bad idea. Um, so uh, I, I don't know. That, that's an interesting interesting uh, storyline heading into the offseason. Will there be any major changes and is it happening other places? I'm assuming it is. I know uh, the men's game, I know there's a lot of outcry about how the, the Baylor-North Carolina game was officiated uh, yesterday. And uh, I didn't watch that game. have really watched very little men's college basketball since Iowa lost. Basically none. And don't really plan to until we get at least to probably the Sweet 16, maybe Elite 8. I'll watch some. Um, but uh, that's just kind of how I am after Iowa loses. One. And again, it happens. Yes, it does, sir. Um this is disturbing that people want to see me do a combine. Um, again, you're not going to be very impressed. Um, George, uh, Iowa had a 92% chance to win. I'm assuming that's according to ESPN's FPI with 97 seconds left in the game. Up by four. And again, you just can't allow a three there. And they allow a three. I, I just don't. Uh, the defensive, uh, you can say they lost it offensively. They scored 62, but there were some serious breakdowns defensively, especially in that fourth quarter. Way too many easy drives to the to the cup. The open three, it was not a great contest from Sonano. Um, it just wasn't just wasn't uh, wasn't solid enough on that end. Thomas, Michigan State is going to have a hard time beating Duke. Freedom uh, Liberty says we did not choke. We actually overachieved this year. Earl Hayden disagrees. He says it's choking. Everybody has a right to to disagree. I appreciate you guys being respectful about it, but I understand both sides of it because. The women had a lot more expectations than the men, right? And people are going to be harder on the men because, let's be honest, there's just a bigger following for the men. Whether you like it or not, there is just a bigger following for the men. But you can argue both choked, I guess, but it, I don't know that that's what actually happened. Sometimes you just don't show up at the wrong time, and that's kind of what happened. That's how I would explain it, and uh, it's dis as disappointing as it is. Leo. I'm so proud of the women this year, all their accomplishments. Clark's got two more years. Things are looking up. It's a great perspective. And yeah, they won the Big Ten. They won the Big Ten regular season. They won the Big Ten tournament title. 
that is all very, very positive. There are very positive things happening right now in Iowa, Iowa hoops. I mean, whether you're talking about the men or the women, very positive things happening. Um, want to bring this up. If anybody is interested in donating to this channel, um, certainly there are super chats available, super stickers, super thanks here that YouTube provides, but you can also donate in the description below. want to appreciate, want to extend my appreciation to everybody who has done that in the past, but certainly as we go into the off season, I'd like to be able to continue to produce content on recruiting, on spring practice, um, everything we can, we can, we can talk about continue to, to ex I expect to be able to continue that, but please help if you can, it's always appreciated. Um, you can, you can donate uh, in any way you see fit much appreciated. Uh, if you, if that is a desire of yours and you're able to do so. So thank you very much for that. Brian says, uh, in my opinion, an error was made, not giving the two fouls on Creighton's last possession. Good point, Brian. Didn't think about that. And, um, you know, I'm sure Lisa Bluter would probably say it's a bit early to do that because I think there was what, like 30 seconds left. I think that's what we're, we're not talking about the, yeah. Cause they had to, they ended up having to use those two with under 10 seconds to go. So I see your point, Brian, but you also probably don't expect to give up a three there. Um, but that is a, a valid point. Um, the other thing is you, you know, if you're Lisa Bluter, maybe use one of those that, I mean, at least get one of those out of the way. That way you've got one to spare in case you do foul. Um, on the possession that ended up giving Creighton the lead, but that is a valid, very valid point. Um, Kurt says Clark puts, uh, excuse me, Clark plus Creighton players is a national champ contender. And I was so impressed with, with Lauren Jensen. Isn't that just insane? Lauren Jensen, who was here, and I know she was a freshman. She averaged, what, 1.4 points a game. Now, I don't know the backstory on, on Lauren Jensen, why she left. Um, I'm assuming maybe playing time, although she was just a freshman. So I, I guess maybe somebody can fill me in on on Lauren. But boy, had, had she been here, you'd have to think she would have been a major, major contributor for this team. It is what it is. Uh, Doug, I can't get down on the Hawks. Both men and the women teams were entertaining all year long. Tough ending to their seasons. I agree, Doug. Wholeheartedly agree. Short says Bluter said the refs were, uh, officiate differently in March than they did in November, this, uh, February, and that was the problem. There's probably something to, to be said about that as well. I don't think it's been good at any point. If I'm not disagreeing, I'm not disagreeing with Lisa Bluter, but it wasn't good back in February either. And it is, it's not consistent. It needs to be consistent from beginning to end. And the problem is you've got officials from different conferences. They do officiate things differently. And uh, that is a problem. But again, I'm not going to blame this loss on officiating but it was a factor as, as was the uh, men's loss on, on Thursday. Brian says that she did give credit to, to Creighton and, and Lisa Bluter's a class act. I'm not surprised by that. Thomas uh, college football needs to fix the fake injuries and targeting rules for next season. They also need to, to fix the celebration rules, Thomas. It's ridiculous. Um, the celebration rules need to either go away or they need to be um, severely altered, but you're absolutely right. The fake injuries are a problem. It doesn't sound like they're going to fix these things um, because uh, was it the NCAA that ruled on this or whoever the, the rules committee that are, that rules on these types of things and make the makes these regulations uh, over the past couple of months decided that uh, from what I heard decided that there was not going to be a change. There was basically not going to be a rule implemented to prevent fake injuries. Uh, and then the targeting rules, I just think how, how they enforce those need to change. I'm okay with, what is a targeting penalty and the criteria behind that? But I have a problem with kicking a kid out of the game, especially if it's unintentional. If it's vicious, just like you, you can you have a levels of a targeting or excuse me, levels of a flagrant foul in college basketball. You have a flagrant one, flagrant two. There should be levels of targeting. The fact that it's a one size fits all is ridiculous, and it's it's not fair. Um, hand checking is a problem as well. Brian brings that up. Uh, Omaha KC Kings. Assuming you're a Creighton fan, so congratulations on a Sweet 16 trip. First trip for the Blue Jays in program history. Creighton's women making up for men's team, always coming up short. But Omaha KC Kings, let's give some credit to the men because, boy, they pushed Kansas, nearly made the Sweet 16. I give that team a lot of credit. They lost a lot this past offseason and still nearly made it to the Sweet 16. Um. Lomansky is just trying to, I understand Lomansky. I'm just giving you a hard time about your, your dog comment. <laughs> uh, John, 
Uh, who plays the best defense in the Big Ten? The Big Ten Conference seems disinterested in defense. Well, Wisconsin, are we talking about the men or are we talking about the women, John? Because in the men's game, I'd say Wisconsin uh, defensively is one of the best in the business, um, nationally even. Um, you know, Michigan State typically plays pretty good defense, although at times they struggled this year. They've struggled these last couple of years. In the women's game, I, I don't really have the answer for you. I, mean, I think, you know, Maryland and, and Michigan and Iowa would all prefer to – run you off the court and that works at times, but you got to be able to play both ends. And uh, Lisa Bluter still trying to figure that out for her team. Tipsy McStagger. Um, all the no calls. Um, yeah. I'm sure they're going to, uh, I don't know if they'll submit anything if, if it gets to that point, but there's going to be lots of conversations between coaches and between the conferences about some of these problems. Uh, because again, I do believe that they're there and I don't think it's just us imagining it. Um, we all live in the moment at times, but I do believe they're there. Uh, call line is open, folks. Uh, 515-635-1601. 515-635-1601. Thomas, Iowa had a chance to play South Carolina in the Elite Eight. Elite eight. They won't even have a chance to play in the Sweet 16 now. Um, disappointing, but I don't think they had much of a chance against South Carolina. I just don't. Um, you know, Maybe I'm a, a, a home wrecker, but... I don't think that game, I don't think Iowa could have dealt with with South Carolina's size, South Carolina's uh, athleticism, rebounding. I just think that would have been a very difficult mismatch, maybe even worse than the, the Baylor game a few years ago in the tournament. Um, Kurt brings up Bluter not calling a timeout and removing. Um, I'm assuming you're talking about Sinano for perimeter defense. You know, it just wasn't good perimeter defense. It wasn't good communication. Thank you for this, Doug. Appreciate the super chat from Doug Phelps. He says, thanks for the year, Corey. Enjoyed both the football and basketball sessions. Thank you, Doug. And I've enjoyed it immensely. I'm not going anywhere. Uh, I know no post-game shows for the time being because we're going into a, a long off season. I'm going to enjoy a lot of time outdoors, but I'm still going to be here. And we'll still do periodic live streams. We'll have our Hawkeye Hangout streams every once in a while. Um, and um, content throughout the year. So, uh I'm not going anywhere, Doug, but thank you for this. And thank you for being here throughout the year and your respect is always appreciated, Doug. Um, Creighton's men has, have had so many chances in the past 10 years to beat big name programs like Duke, Kansas. They've always come up short and they came up short yesterday, but what an effort from the Blue Jays. Um, got it done on the women's court today, though. So congratulations to them. Expect the unexpected in March. There's no, uh, no question about that. Leo. Women's basketball won two championships this year. I'll take that over anything. And the men's one Big Ten championship, nothing to hold your head down about. I agree. Now, some people don't agree, Leo, but I agree. I, I'm still positive. It's 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 heartbreaking. It's disappointing. It's it's all of the above. But I, I could not be happier for all for all these championships. These are banner years, whether you want to say that or not, whether you think they deserve it or not. I know it's disappointing losing early, but I love the Big Ten tournament, and and that was one of the best wins of my basketball life. It just stinks that it, it it's followed up with what we've seen over these past few days. It's just, it, it just is what it is. DC Hawk. Thank you for this, sir. Thank you for your generosity as well. For the super chat. He says, great effort with your channel, Corey, keep it up. Thank you, sir. Very much appreciate that. And uh, as I always say, credit to everyone, including yourself, but everyone who, He's on here with me regularly and, and participates and donates to the channel. It, uh, so it helps me to continue to put out content and um, continue to pair up with guys like Mark Rogers and, and Don Patterson and Gary Close and all the former players and personalities we've had on the show. So thank you for this. It is very much appreciated. And again, I'm not going anywhere. So please uh, keep it right here. Turn notifications on for the channel if you have not already done so. Freedom Liberty says uh, the transfer was likely a result of Lauren wanting to be the starting point guard. Clark committed late. I'm just confused, Freedom Liberty. And again, maybe fill me in on this if I'm just not remembering how she averaged 1.4 points a game. She just didn't play much last year. I'm just confused as to why that is. Um, you know, I you would think that if Lisa Bluter was really serious about convincing her to stay, despite the fact that Caitlin Clark was here, you would give her enough minutes. I mean, even if she's playing off the ball, she's got the shooting prowess. Obviously it seemed to me today that she can play off the ball more. Um, so I'm a bit surprised by that, but 
Um, you, you might, you very well might be right about this. And um, I wish her none, nothing but the best. I know she's a Minnesota native um, and I'm happy for, you know, I'm happy for her to, to come in here and, and have this moment. You just hate that it's against the Hawks. Kurt again, brings up rebounding. We've talked about it. Um, Kelly, I am on this Kelly. She says, anyone know why traffic is at a standstill um, on I-80? Well, I'm going to find out for you, Kelly. Um, please drive safe. Um, I am seeing, yeah, it looks like, so I'm assuming you're going east, Kelly. And it appears... If I can pull up my uh, my map here, yeah, it appears like there's some serious traffic issues. Um, just uh, well, just basically right through Iowa City, um, near the Highway One exit, going both ways, and there is a crash on I-80. Um, let me zoom in here so I can give you this report. Uh, a crash right along the it looks like near the Dubuque Street exit. And then another crash, according to this, um, out by High Point Golf Course on I-80. So if you're going eastbound on I-80, uh, it appears as though there are two crashes causing problems. Traffic is moving fairly fast once you get past the High Point Golf Course area, past the uh, Herbert Hoover Highway exit on the far east side of Iowa City. And as you get into the Coralville side of Iowa City, it looks like traffic moving just fine. But there, it looks like there's going to be some delays for people if you're again if you're going eastbound on I-80. So uh, maybe hopefully that answers your question, Kelly. And that was a few minutes ago that you chatted that. But uh, yes, eastbound. Thank you. Um, okay. Lomansky says, uh, thank you, sir. He says, proud of your basketball coverage. Enjoyed every second. Everybody eat your brain food. Food around football around corner undefeated in 2022. There you go, sir. Appreciate the positivity. George says in last media timeout, Bluter emphasized to switch all screens repeatedly. That led to Sonano and Jensen for that last shot. But she didn't switch, George. She was kind of in between. And and that's what I say. If you're going to switch, switch, but be definitive with what you're doing, right? Be clear with what you're doing. And I, I just didn't feel like Monica Sonano did that. And it's unfortunate because I'm not blaming her for the loss. You don't get me wrong. They lost this game on the boards, giving up early threes, um, you know, missing some bunnies. Kelly brought that up earlier. But, uh, yeah, that was a big, uh, big miss. Steve says, uh, your guest list has been very impressive. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate that. And I give a lot of credit to, uh, as I always say, people like um, people like Gary Close. He's been a joy to work with. I can tell you that. Um, and thank you, George, for this as well. But... <laughs> But uh, yes, I'm giving you traffic updates. How about that? I've never, I've never had to do that here. Back when I was working AM radio, we, uh, you know, I was most of the older people that called in. They wanted to know about traffic and and weather. And y- y'all want to talk about sports, which I'd rather talk about for the record. But I can go back into AM radio mode if I have to. So, uh, yep, st- uh, hang in there, Kelly, and you'll get through the traffic. Certainly, be safe as you're listening to the show as well. Um, Eric says that a truck tipped and spilled. Beanie Babies all over the road. That very well may have happened. Very well may have happened. Eric says, Brian Ferentz for assistant coach of the year in 2022. Let's hope it. Let's hope that happens, Eric. I'm going to be rooting for him. As long as he's here, I'm going to be rooting for him. Uh, Tipsy says, I wish that Jensen could transfer back. Well, I think uh, probably Lisa Bluter uh, would like that as well. Although, you're not giving up Kate and Caitlin Clark for anybody, but just an off day for her. Just an off day for her. Freedom Liberty says Martin is playing out of position. She is great and more productive at the four. She does a lot without the ball in her hands. Um, she does, and as I've said, Freedom Liberty, I like, I like the ball um, in her hands. I think she's got more. I think she's got potential to be really good off the dribble and to develop her offensive game. But um, she, yeah, she she is playing slightly out of out of position. I, I've mentioned my comparison to Kathleen Doyle, and maybe I'm not the best person to be be saying that. Kathleen was spectacular off, off the bounce, off the dribble. Um, but um, no, there's no question about it. She, she She's going to get better. They need her to be better, and um, I think she'll, she'll, she'll bounce back next year, and they'll have more help next year. This need, the depth is a problem right now. They played, what, eight girls tonight? 
And I thought Kylie Fuhrbach was was going to be um I, I thought Kylie Fuhrbach was going to be a bigger factor this year. And you know, you uh, rabid eye women's basketball fans, you can tell me I'm wrong, but I, I just thought there was going to be a, a bigger factor there. Transfer from Iowa State just never really worked. Hopefully, maybe the offseason will will do her well and uh, move her forward. Um, Doug says, if Brian is getting unemployed next year, it doesn't bode well for the Hawks. Brian is getting unemployed next year. It doesn't bode well for the Hawks. What do you, I, you mean if he's going to get fired? Is that the implication here? I don't think it's going to happen. Now, maybe you're maybe you're not referring to that, uh, Doug. Eric says that I'd be a great replacement for Gary Dolphin when he and Ed finally decide to step down. Well, that's funny. First of all, uh, I could never do what the uh, do, do the job that Gary Dolphin does. But I do want to ask you this um, because I thought about this. Um, I would love to be able to do a, a game with. Uh, with Don Patterson. I, I just, I think Don and I would really work well together in that situation, but um, thank you for this, Eric. Again, I could, I could never, could never, uh, I could, I pale in, in comparison to what, what Gary Dolphin has done. He's tremendous. And he's a great, great guy. Another great personality for Iowa. Doug wants me to read the earlier comment from freedom. Um, oh, I see Brian Ferentz for the unemployment line in 2023. Well, that's true. I guess I see it both ways. If people don't like Brian and don't want him here, the problem is if he leaves next year, that means he didn't get the job done this year. So, I mean, you know, at some point, some point changes are going to need to be made if things don't improve. I just don't know. I think likely the changes, I've said this before on the show, likely the changes that will occur will be Ference Kirk specifically stepping down at some point because he's retiring. Uh, he's doubled down on his son, whether you agree with that or not. Yes, I brought this up earlier, Kurt. Uh, Iowa uh, lacks athleticism, lacks length. Although they've got some uh, length next year, the the problem is too they've they've done very well in the state of Iowa. Um, and I mentioned I can pull the the recruits up for next year again. They've got uh, Taylor McCabe out of the Fremont, Nebraska area, Jada Gianf- uh, Gianfi from uh, Johnston. And then Hannah Stolke from Cedar Rapids, Washington. They're doing well in the state of Iowa. And Stolke will likely, my understanding, and I know we had a, uh, was it our, our caller earlier today brought this up. She'll probably help them early. She's six one. She's got some length. Um, she's probably going to help them on both ends. Um, they're just not real deep right now. And my understanding, let me pull up the roster. I might as well do this because we are talking the Iowa women's basketball team. Let's look at their their roster heading into next year. Uh, and I don't know, I know Sonano, she's announced that she is coming back next year, which is huge. I'm trying to figure out who they're losing because Taiwo, um, Taiwo could come back, right? So I, I don't know if she's going to come back. She she was here, she's been here for three or four years now. I, I just don't know. Maybe she said and I've missed it, but she could come back. Uh, she's improved. I mean, she she didn't have a great day but her numbers have improved each year. She's the definition of a role player. There's no question about it. She shot 47% from three this year. Doesn't just doesn't shoot a lot. Um, you know, she averaged 1.4 her, her freshman year, 2.0 her, her sophomore year. She averaged 3.7 points a game. Her junior year, she averaged nearly five this year. I mean, if you can get her back, you probably don't turn her down, um, but they do have the three freshmen coming in next year, including Taylor McCabe, who will, um, be a guard as well, uh, very similar in stature to a uh, uh, Tommy Taiwo. Um, obviously, Fierbach is is going to be back. Um, McKenna Warnock will be back. Kate Martin will be back. Obviously, Clark, uh, Logan Cook. Of course, she didn't play. Um, she got hurt. She, um, I believe, she's got another year. Right? She's got another year if she wants it. And again, if I'm missing announcements from these players, let me know. But uh, Sharon Goodman will be back. Ro Grady will be back. Sonano's back. Gabby Marshall's back. They could potentially return everybody. Here's the deal, though. You got three players coming in. And I have to count through who you have on scholarship. Um, my guess is somebody's going to have to leave. I, I don't, again, I don't, don't want to take the time to figure all that out right now. But, yeah, they're going to be returning almost everybody. So uh, it's it's possible that Iowa could be better next year. Probably, I, I would say it's probable because I would have to think you, you better your size inside next year by returning Goodman. You get a couple freshmen coming in there as well. 
you have to think that defense is going to be a, a huge um, – it's going to be just a huge talking point again heading into the offseason. Um, I see that Freedom Liberty says Taiwo and Cook are both leaving. So if that happens, uh, assuming that happens, then um, they should be fine on scholarships, I believe. Um, and then, why, yes, I, I, I forgot uh, Wettering. She'll be back as well. Um, she is a sophomore, so she'll be back. Um, but, yeah, they need to stay healthy. The injuries have been a problem. And uh, it started early this year. Uh, you know, it's uh, unfortunately, you look at look at what happened this year on the glass. You look at what happened defensively. There's not a whole lot of – you can work on rebounding. You're going to work on, um, you know, your defensive stance. Certainly your man-to-man you're going to work on. But you are going to be limited like the men were last year. You're going to be limited with um, your ability to be able to shut people down man-to-man. Um, the zone needs to get better. If you're going to play without the level of athleticism that most top 25 teams possess, even in the women's game, you better make up for it with really stellar zone. And I don't think Iowa's zone is very stellar. It might be a bit better than Iowa's typically, the men's typically. But uh, certainly it wasn't great. It wasn't great this year in general. And certainly rebounding out of the zone is a problem. We, we see that. Jermaine, uh, Taylor McCabe, is, is she related to former Iowa men's basketball Zach McCabe? I don't believe so. Maybe I'm wrong on this. Again, I I, I know our friends over at Nebraska Hawks Nest, um, they uh, they did an interview with Taylor McCabe quite a, way, quite a while back, and uh, I, I don't believe so, but I could be wrong on that. So don't quote me on it. Um, Tipsy says that, that Cook is healthy now, just no minutes for her. Okay, so if that's the case, then my guess is Logan's moving on. Um. If Giamfi redshirts next year, you know, is O'Grady going to redshirt her sophomore year? That's a question, Freedom Liberty. I don't know. Obviously, she had to play this year with Goodman down. Um, I, I don't know if that's something that that uh, Lisa Bluter will want to do. DC Hawk, switching back to football for a moment, he says, there's an idea for you. You and Coach Patterson could call an Iowa football game. One could mute the TV and get the analysis from you two. So here's the deal about that. Uh, it's a great idea, DC Hawk, but I know the University of Iowa would not be okay with that at all. Um, that had been done by some radio stations. And again, I just know this from past, from past years that has been, that idea has been, uh, duplicated, but the university and Learfield would not approve of that. So that probably wouldn't go over very well. Um, and, uh, but it's a great idea and I'd love to do it. Um, and if you ever heard Don Patterson do the Missouri Valley conference on ESPN plus and ESPN.com, he does a very good job as a, as an analyst. Um, and I would love to do it, but uh, probably will not happen. Um, multiple red shirts would not surprise me. Again, I, I just have to look at the scholarship counts too, but they're so they're so thin this year with as a result of injuries. They need to add probably at least two players to the regular rotation. And that's also taking into account if Taiwo and Logan Cook leave, um, then you have to figure out, you know, who fills those spots. And then do you, I mean, you're only bringing in three freshmen. You're going to get Goodman back and she was out with injury. And who's the other girl that was hurt? Um, and then I'm drawing a blank again, but uh, yeah, they're, they're going to have to add at least two play. I think, I don't think eight's enough. It's just, it's just not enough. Maybe nine's enough, but preferably you want at least 10 or 11 healthy players, even if you're only playing nine a game and they just didn't have the depth. I think that certainly hurt them and it's going to hurt you on the glass. It's going to hurt you defensively because you just don't have um, you just don't have the legs. And that wasn't a problem with the men because everyone wants to talk about the men, the, the Big Ten championship being too close to the NCAA tournament. Well, I mean, they, they played what 14 guys was it 14 guys, 12 guys against Purdue in the Big Ten championship game. So I don't blame uh, stamina. And again, Richmond played that same day as well. They played four games in four days. Um, now, maybe Richmond's legs kind of gave out finally in their round of 32 game. Um, how fitting that that would happen. Um, because they are absolutely throttled by Providence. So, uh, but again, it is what it is. Um, just running through here, seeing if I missed Wettering. That's, she's the girl that was injured. And again, I just didn't, didn't see her, um, you know, and, and she was, I have to look back at her numbers from her freshman year. She's from Montezuma. Um, played seven games last year. So yeah, that's why I really don't have much analysis on her because I haven't watched her play. Um, and so hopefully she can come along and, and, um, you know, help them in the backcourt as well. Help them. She's a, she's a forward, right? She's a, she's about six foot tall. Um, she, so she'll help them again with some, with some, you know, length and, and defensively, I'd help, I'd have to think she will help in that zone, 
but um, it'll be good to get her healthy and hopefully they can stay healthy. That's it. these, these injuries happened. Majority of the injuries happened during the off season and it, it does hurt you and it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt other players as well. You're not having, you know, you don't have Warnock going up against wettering in, in practice and you don't have, um, you know, Warnock going up against, um, you know, or, or you could bring up O'Grady. I mean, she's going to going up against Sonano every day in practice, but having Goodman back is, is going to help. And Sharon Goodman is going to be a big factor on this team uh, at six, three. And uh, I think she's, she's got an opportunity next year um, to be a big one, two punch. I don't know how much I, I, I'll be, it'll be interesting to see if they do what they do with O'Grady or if they play some, you play Sonano and Goodman together a lot. Uh, or or Grady and Sonano. I, I don't know that that works. Uh, O'Grady is just such a natural five, but and so is Sonano, really. Um, but these are all things that will work them, themselves out uh, in the offseason. Uh, Freedom Liberty says, Wettering was injured two years in a row, dealt with COVID as a freshman. We don't know what she can do. Bluter says she will play the three. So And she's got good size to play the three at six foot. So, you know, we'll just have to wait and see. But bottom line, folks, I mean, you, you can't argue with a Big Ten championship. You can't argue with, um, you know, a Big Ten tournament championship. I know the men disappointed, but they also won a Big Ten tournament championship. It's disappointing. I get it. Um, I'm disappointed. Not even as a person who's trying to operate a, a business and, and trying to, to build the YouTube channel, but just as a fan. I'm just, uh, just as disappointed as everybody else. So... Let's get to one more call here. One final call before we end this show for the final call of our post game season. Thank you for calling Iowa post game here from the Hawkeye of the storm. Who's on the line. Hey, Corey, it's Eric B. Hey, Eric. How are you, sir? Oh, not too bad. How about yourself? Well, I'm doing okay. I got an hour and a half now to kind of process the fact that basketball's done for another what seven months and uh, i'm doing okay how are you oh not too bad it could be better with the results but that's I, every year it seems to happen something happens I hear you. like that but i hear you <laughs> yeah no i just wanted to say thanks for putting all the good shows together and like somebody said all the great guests that you've had on i appreciate you appreciate that eric and uh appreciate you being here like i said it's been a blast for me it's been as much fun for me as anybody that's uh yourself and anybody else listening it's uh it's a pleasure to be able to yeah. talk with with some of the greats yeah absolutely and uh like i said you put on a good show and uh I'm definitely optimistic for next year um, i think all the teams have a pretty good core of players coming back so i think there's a lot of optimism to be had for all the teams next year i think they could any of them could make long runs whether it's football men's or women's basketball any of them could yeah and i got a, a status update for everybody we keep talking about who's coming back uh let's not forget that uh we got a girl called a girl named caitlin clark coming back next year so hard to be too pessimistic when you've got uh the best player in the country coming back and coming back for at least another couple of years i would expect absolutely so you know i appreciate it eric and and thanks for listening don't go anywhere this off season don't be a stranger yeah, definitely. Now keep up the good work, and I look forward to hearing the show next year, too. Thanks, Eric. Take care. Have a great night. Yeah. You too. Thanks. Bye. Appreciate that call and appreciate everybody's kind words. Kurt, thank you for this. Merv, thank you as well. And uh, to Ari Gold, who uh, uh getting a little feisty earlier. Let's just, like I said, just, you know, appreciate your support as well. Everybody's support, but just please just be kind to one another because I don't want to play monitor uh, moderator in the chat either. Um, a reminder to everybody, I'm not going anywhere this off season. So we're gonna be talking about Iowa football, specifically spring football. I'll be with Mark Rogers over at the Iowa, the voice of college football channel Tuesday live at 4 30 PM. So if you haven't already subscribed, don't have turn, uh, notifications turned on there, please do. So if you're interested in sponsoring this show, this channel, um, or the Iowa, the voice of college football channel, specifically our Tuesday shows, please reach out to me. Um, uh, my Twitter is at from the Hawkeye. So if you're not already following me on Twitter, you can message me through Twitter. Um, if you're interested in sponsorships or inquiring about a potential sponsorship, you can also message through Facebook, our Facebook page from the Hawkeye of the storm. Um, you can also email me from the eye of the storm, all one word and from the Hawkeye of the storm is a bit too long from the eye of the storm. In fact, I'll put this up here. So if anybody's interested in reaching out about, 
potential sponsorship opportunities. But you can do that from the eye of the storm at outlook.com. That's me. Reach out about sponsoring this show. You can even reach out about sponsoring the post game shows next year because I plan on being back. I hope to hope to get Don Patterson back for football this September, and um, we'll work on Gary. I, I, you know, we'll, that's a that's a ways away. November's a long ways away, unfortunately. But please reach out if you're interested. Again, uh, as you see on the bottom ticker there, this show, this re- recorded version of this show, and every post game show that I do, including not just post game shows, but my weekly podcast, Brada's Branded Thoughts. Um, lots of great content, interviews with future recruits, future players, um, former players, etc. That is available also from the Hawkeye of the Storm on Spotify, Apple, Google, uh, Amazon, right here on YouTube. So please check out the podcast as well. And I'm just seeing if I'm missing anything else before I uh, before I call it a day. Uh, YouTube sucks. He says, biggest disappointment this year, men's basketball, women's basketball, football, or wrestling? That's a great question. It's a great question. Um, biggest disappointment? This is, this is going to make a lot of people angry. This is going to make a lot of people angry. I don't think any of the four were disappointments in, in, in general, right? Oh, cumulatively, as I always say, cumulatively, n- none of the four were disappointments. Every one of those. Now, I know wrestling, you know, Spencer Lee goes down, but they were number two in the country most of the year. Men's basketball won a Big Ten tournament championship. The women won a Big Ten tournament championship. They won a uh, regular season championship. Football won the West. Each had their their downsides. Each had their their moments both ways. Honestly, the, you could say, especially the men and, and football, like the men's basketball team and the football team, very, very similar in how their seasons transpired. Both gave people incredible hope that, hey, this team might be elite. They might be able to make national noise. You know, the, the men win the Big Ten tournament. The, the football team wins um, the West. But then once you get to where it really seems to matter to people, and I understand it, where it really counts – March Madness, the NCAA tournament, um, you know, the Big Ten championship game and, and bowl season, both teams faltered. And you could argue the same for the women. Very, there, there are still some some humps for these programs to overcome. I'd probably say wrestling. I'm least involved in wrestling. Tipsy says it's wrestling. Certainly the expectations with wrestling, you'd have to say wrestling. But again, with, with Spencer Lee out, it's unfortunate. And thank you, Eric, again, for calling in. Uh, Freedom, Liberty. Uh, says the same thing. Wrestling, Kelly. I hope you're. Let me give you one final update. Uh, hopefully, you're you're made. You've made it through the traffic. Looks like still a slowdown on I-80. It looks like they've got the they've got one of the crashes cleared up, but eastbound traffic from Dubuque Street all the way over to almost all the way over to the uh, Herbert Hoover Highway uh, I-80 um, on and off ramps. That whole stretch of uh, I-80 eastbound is slowed down. So please drive safe if you're out there coming home from the women's game. I know you're stuck in traffic. Um, but again, thank you for being here all season. And I will not be going anywhere. So uh, please don't unsubscribe. Stay here and we'll be with you throughout the season. Appreciate the time, folks. We will talk to you very soon. I'm Corey Bradda from the Hawkeye of the Storm. Go Hawks. <laughs>